everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I'm here again with the Crafters Workshop. It's coming towards the end of our design team uh, period. We had a wonderful year here at the Crafters Workshop. But I wanted to show you one more idea using that tacky when dry gel medium and also how to use it in a different way with the stencil. So last time I showed you using it through a stencil and then we added the gilding flakes. And this week I want to show you something a little bit different. So kind of along the same theme. Um, but another idea with those gilding flakes and how you can do it a little bit differently. So here I have a piece of Bristol Smooth. I also have some press and seal underneath because I want to be able to go over the edges and it's not hard at all to clean up, but I'm a lazy crafter and I know lots of us crafters like things that can make our life just a little bit easier. Um, and this is definitely one of those things. So if I'm doing something super messy, I will put down press and seal first. Um, in England, you could use um, cling film. Uh, so press and seal is a little bit different, but actually I did find it before I left in Tesco. So you may have some uh, luck there if you're looking for it. And I know you can buy it off Amazon and things and have it shipped to England. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying down a thin coat of this tacky when dry gel onto a piece of Bristol Smooth that's approximately card front sized. So I'm just laying this down like this. And now you want to leave this to dry. Now you can leave it on your press and seal to dry, which is even better because it means I can just peel it anywhere and leave it. Um, I will remove it from the area that I was working on, otherwise you'll find it sticks to that and you end up with press and seal on your project. If you just leave it kind of on the top half, you'll find that dries in about 15 to 20 minutes and then I can show you a really fun technique with the gilding flakes. So once your piece is completely dry, it will be a little bit tacky, but what you want to make sure is it is thoroughly dry. I ended up actually leaving mine overnight because I'd filmed the other piece uh, late in the day. Um, but if you don't leave it long enough, you will feel like your cardstock is still a little bit soggy and wet and you want to make sure it feels nice and stiff. Otherwise, it's going to stick to your stencil and you're not going to get the great results. So we're going to pop our stencil over the top. I'm not going to stick it down too firmly, just kind of lightly press it down. And then we're going to use a little bit of masking tape to hold it down. So I'm going to have a piece up here and a piece down here. So, like so. I'm just going to put a little bit on the sides as well. So this is just purple painter's tape. It is not the Thermaweb um, purple tape. I love this tape. I will link it in the description below for you. Um, I've been using it now for over a year and unless I'm doing something with water I always use this tape here. If I'm working with water then I do tend to use the front tape because it's waterproof and that was a tip I actually got from the guy who repainted our house after we had a flood last year. So a few of you have said how gilding flakes are your nemesis and that you don't even breathe when you work with them. So I'm going to give you a few tips. So you can see here they do stick to you. One thing that is worth having, I'm just going to pull one out my drawer, is a dryer sheet. So here I have unscented dryer sheets that I keep in my um, piece below. And so I just kind of wipe my fingers off with one of those. You'll find it uh, wipes off really easily that way and now I'm just going to start rubbing so I want to rub those gilding flakes in between the stencils so I'm using the same stencil as last time and in the blog post I will put a picture of our previous project which we used um, just the one color of gilding flakes and I asked you what your favorite combinations were and I wanted to show you how you could do this project but with multiple colours of flakes. So I'm just rubbing in here and you can see I only take a little bit at any one time and I'm going to start rubbing these in and I'm going to start in here and if you miss anything don't worry because we are going to be adding that second colour of gilding flakes so if there are any areas that you've missed, yeah, we will still pick them up. And then the other thing I like to do, so I'm going to pop the lid on. 
I don't like keeping them in Tupperware particularly. I have tried that idea. I didn't um, like that. I found I had even more static. So what I like to do is when I'm um, kind of done with one colour is first of all I'll rub over it with my dryer sheet and that kind of removes lots of it. And then I love this surface sweep from Nouveau and I go over it like this. So between the two things I pretty much removed any excess of the gilding flakes and I do not have gilding flakes everywhere either which is really really nice. Now I'm going to lift the stencil up and so you can see I've got that little bit of pattern in there using that silver colour and now we're going to add in that second colour so we're going to add using the copper now you can use any colour of gilding flakes you'd like but I just absolutely adore copper again just little bits so I'm going to put some different areas of my project and I've got some clumps here but I'm going to just start doing exactly the same thing of just putting this down and rubbing and so it's just going to stick to anywhere that they're still sticky which is why I said if you've got any empty areas it doesn't matter because we're going to be adding that second colour in so I now have plenty on my work surface you can just grab those pieces and work on them again so you can see here just kind of grab bits off of my surface and I'm working on my Tim Holtz glass mat and there's going to be some of these glass mats available very very soon they are um, shipping out to retailers so if you're hoping for a glass mat not much of a weight left hopefully and so I'm just going to fill in these little areas here and keep it down here And so you can see there how I've got those two beautiful colours, but I've still got all those swirls and the detail from the stencil in a beautiful, beautiful background. So again, I'm going to clear up in exactly the same way. Um, I'm going to just try and brush some of this back into my pot. So I'm just putting that at the front of my table here. Like so. Pop my lid on. If you have a room with a fan or something, I would suggest turning the fan off before you start working with the gilding flakes. And then super, super easy clear up with the unscented dryer sheet. So you can see there how easy that is to clean up as well. And we want to trim our panel down. So I'm just grabbing my guillotine. And so I'm going to trim this piece down to so the finish size I want to get to is uh, three and three quarters by five and a half inches so I'm just going to trim a little bit off of each side until I've got to that point so there's my three and three quarters and now I'm going to get it down to five inches So that's our beautiful panel on there and of course you could save all of these off cuts as well for sentiments and for all sorts of bits and pieces. Now I already have here a piece of black cardstock that's already cut down to matting layer and I'm actually really short on black cardstock. I go through so much black cardstock. I love it for matting, for die cutting, for all sorts of things. And so a top tip is if you are low on a particular colour then if you want to die cut a word, die cut it out the middle. So I could have got two loves in here and then you can cut it down and it's going to make perfect matting layer and no one's going to know that underneath I've cut that love out. This is actually going to be my wedding anniversary card for Greg um, as it's our wedding anniversary, the day that this blog post is going out. So it seems quite apt to have that and it's going to make a beautiful masculine card um, with these gilding flakes on there through a stencil so I am um, going to 
to stick that on there. And I'm going to use some of my favourite foam tape. And also, if you are um, on Facebook, you'll want to join our Crafty Sales group on Facebook. This tape was recently down to a really, really super low price. Um, and anything like that, if I spot a deal, then I always post them in there. And once a week, if you sign up for our newsletter on the blog, thehedgehoghollow.com, we send out all the best deals of the week, any favourite new products that have come out, um, plus all of our videos, we do a wrap up as well, so you'll never miss anything on there as well. So I'm matting this onto a piece of Nina Solar White, eight and a half by 11, cut in half lengthways, and I've already pre-scored it as well. So I'm going to fold this in half and use my phone folder under there. So just to finish this off, I'm going to use that love. This is a die by Catherine Pula. Again, of course, I will link everything up in the description for you. And I'm going to stick that down using my smooth precision glue pen as well. So this is great on those fine die cuts. So you can see you can just... You can either do a line like this, or I've always been a girl, I had this discussion on a video recently, I've just always done dots. When I used to use my Tombow Mono, um, it just seems to be a habit I've picked up. And it works for me, so whatever works for you on there. I can use my favourite tweezers to pick this up. And again, I'm going to stick that down. And whenever I put a die cut on a card, I usually use something reasonably heavy to hold it down. And I happen to have my phone here. So I'm just gonna pop my phone on top just for a couple of seconds. Something, um, an acrylic block works well. Um, anything with a little bit of weight, or otherwise I use a wallpaper roller that you can get on Amazon really, really inexpensively. So that's our finished card. I'm gonna pop my phone back on there just until it's dry but I absolutely love that effect using the stencil that tacky when dry gel from the crafters workshop and of course don't forget to check out the blog post there's a full supply list underneath the video in the description below and we'll see you again very soon as well happy stamping everyone don't forget to hit that subscribe button or stamp the bell so you get notifications of all of our new videos do give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video plus do leave me a comment I'd love to know um when your wedding anniversary is and if you make your husband or wife um, a anniversary card using your stamps or techniques as well. So see you again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye. Mm -hmm.